thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be in your great country. I, I'm really the, the representative, uh, I guess, of international echo. I, I'm a palliative care doctor, but I don't say that often to people when I first meet them because you normally get one of two responses. The first is, uh, oh, I could never do that. <laughs> or the other one is a, a look of suspicion. What sort of crazy psychopathy makes somebody want to actually work with the dying? I don't see it like that. At medical school, it was a choice between obstetrics and palliative care. Very similar specialties, looking after normal human events. Aiming for a good delivery. <laughs> <laughs> I had an, an epiphany when I was preparing for this talk. I was looking back over the patients who had been involved with uh, over the last while, and I, I realized it wasn't as a physician that I'd had a most impact. It was as an accompanist, an accompanist. Like uh, the pianist who, who pays along with the violinist to some sort of music, I accompany people. Often I accompany them, I guess, on journeys they don't want to, to go on, to places they don't want to go, but my role is to accompany them. And it's a great responsibility. We've been echoing in Northern Ireland for almost three months. And during that time, we're already seeing a big impact. Who are we echoing to? Our eight community hospice nurse teams scattered all around our little country. We're seeing already the impact of creating a community of accompanists. The, the thing that we are surprised about is that the, the, the real difference in our echo has come from creating a safe space where our nurses, who are often working in isolation, are able to talk about their failures as well as their successes and thus support each other. Uh, Friday, Friday week ago, one of our more junior nurses, she opened up about the difficulties she'd had in getting a patient with spinal cord compression admitted. She said, I ended up sitting in my car with my mobile phone and I was just crying with frustration. Immediately, from all over the country, colleagues said, I've been in that car too. Well done in sticking with it. Well done getting her in there. Go, girl. Well, uh, they're reserved Europeans. They didn't say go, girl. I was, that was a translation. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. Uh, support and knowledge. Support and knowledge. That support that they gave to her and their knowledge about how they had got around that problem the gold of echo. Being an accompanist isn't just a passive thing because the accompanist really needs to know the score so that they can inspire confidence when they pass on knowledge that that knowledge won't just be listened to but will be applied. This is Karen. Karen came into our hospice about seven weeks ago. And she came with a clear score, a clear agenda. She wanted to be built up. You see, Karen is a mother of, of two girls, aged seven and four. And she has advanced bowel cancer. And her goal was that if she got built up, she could have chemotherapy, and chemotherapy would give her the chance of as many years as possible with her husband and two girls. That was her goal. And yet, it was clear whenever she came into hospice that the disease was already so far advanced that chemotherapy wasn't really an option. And yet, Karen was absolutely focused on chemotherapy as getting her her chance to be with her girls. By focusing so determinedly on chemotherapy, Karen was at risk of missing out of the chance of the time that she could have with her girls. 
So by listening to her desperate hope, by sharing with her the true score gently, we were able to, to change her goals and the goals of her husband and the goals of her children. And she managed to get her head around that. Very quickly, lists started to be made. Memory books were filled. Our outpatients was taken over one night with a sleepover with a tent thing and, and a band and music and a double bed for Andy and, and Karen. Uh, lots of stuff happened in that time. Karen, Karen's body left us last week, but by which time she'd already arranged for her corneas to be donated and for her tumor to go to a cancer research laboratory in England. These photographs were almost the last thing on her list of things that she wanted to leave for her girls. She taught us a huge amount. Now, I clearly see the world in a strange way through palliative care eyes, but when I look at Echo, I see that the, the key things which were important to accompanying Karen are the key things for Echo. What are they? Listening. In order to develop that bond, people need to believe that you really are listening and understanding what they're saying. Knowledge, the democratization of knowledge, sharing information clearly adult to adult with Karen was really important. And then we felt on the other side that we learned more from Karen than we shared with her. And yet she and her husband were adamant that our knowledge of the score, excellent symptom control, and being able to accompany her as people who had accompanied others was really, was really helpful. Across the world, I've worked a good bit, eight years in Nepal and India, various countries. I've observed that the things that make for a good death are universal, whether it's Albuquerque or Belfast or Kathmandu or South Sudan. It's the same things. And accompanists are absolutely crucial. And that's why I am so excited about ECHO, because ECHO makes accompanists happen. ECHO, listening to what people are really saying. ECHO, sharing knowledge. ECHO, having the confidence in the people that you're accompanying that they will be able to deal with even tough information and develop local solutions which will be appropriate provided they've got access to that knowledge and that support from a wider community. Imagine with handheld devices now costing less than $50 and Google balloons making internet access really possible across our world, what could happen if these nurses were able to connect on a week-by-week -week basis with a central hub in a place where maybe doctors and nurses are really thin on the ground. Millions of people can be changed by ECHO. We're doing a small pilot project in Makwampur district in Nepal. It's a population of 400,000, nearly half of whom live more than uh, a four-hour walk to the nearest blacktop road. The local village health workers already have the integration with the local community, but in terms of improving end-of-life care, they need that support, they need that advice, they need that training to make real impact. ECHO can do that. Last December, I was in Karachi in Pakistan, Pakistan has a tiny population of palliative care professionals, but an overall population, some of the most taxing problems in the world, of 120 million. How could I, a Westerner without a beard, have an impact on end-of-life care in the Swat Valley? Yet by connecting that small hub of palliative care Pakistani professionals with healthcare workers across the country, we could 
train thousands of accompanists to improve the care of the dying. Echo can do that. In November, all being well, I returned to Kazakhstan, a country of only 15 million people, but nearly half the size of the United States. Tiny palliative care professional population in the cities of Almaty and Astana. How can they impact on the care of end of life in such a vast area? Echo can do that. And our world, let's be modest, our world facing that dilemma of exponential rise in healthcare need with finite resources. And our specialist Western model isn't working. We need a response which recognizes the skills and strengths and abilities of even the most remote communities and builds on those abilities in order to improve healthcare across the globe significantly. My hope is that we, the ECHO family, will really share this vision. That together, we will accompany one another to make a huge difference to the lives and deaths of millions of people. Albert Einstein gave us this incredible insight that imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world. Sanjeev's imagination has given us echo. The challenge to us is to take echo to places and to people that even Sanjeev has not yet imagined. <laughs> Thank you so much.